All right, so yes, I know there is a lot going on, um, but what I can see here is that um, I, I've done all my differentiating um, on the right hand side here. And what I want to do is um, somewhat like how I did in my informal proof, right? I see that there are real and imaginary parts kind of uh, tucked away in here. And um, I can also identify the real and imaginary parts over here from the way that I defined this function right from the outset. Okay, so I I'll get to that in a second, but let's try and um, sift out this thing uh, because it's so much of a mess. I think that I can, uh, even though it's going to become illegible, I'm going to file that away over here will do just in case we need to refer to it again. In order to separate the real and imaginary parts on the right hand side, even though it's kind of something which I'm, I'm nervous about, I'm clearly going to have to expand all these terms here, right? You can see um, there's an I term in here and there's an I term in here and to get them together, I'm going to have to break them out of these brackets. Okay, so let's have a go with this. Here comes cos t dm on dx, so you can see where I got those bits there, plus I sine t dm on dx. The next thing that comes in, I'm now expanding the second set of brackets here, is going to be um, m times minus sine t times dt on dx. So um, I'll bring that minus sign out the front and then I get m sine t dt on dx and then plus um, i m cos t dt on dx. Okay, now you can see where I'm going to be headed shortly. Um, I'm going to have uh, these imaginary parts over here. They're going to get together. Um, and I also want to get this on the left hand side. There's real and imaginary parts in there as well. So uh, let's try and push this over a little bit to the right hand side so I've got a bit of space. Um, I will highlight, uh, let's see here, this is a real part here and this is a real part here. And then here are the imaginary parts. Okay, so let's do the real parts first. Um, they're going to be uh, cos t dm on dx minus m sine t dt on dx. Okay, there is the real part. And then here comes the imaginary part. We'll factor out that i. And then big set of brackets. First comes in uh, this guy here. So it's sine t dm on dx dx plus uh, this other one we get on this side so that's going to be whew, a lot of terms here m cos t dt on dx all right there we go so I have all of my real and imaginary parts separated out. Now I'm ready to return to my left hand side. Um, you can see this e to the i x, right? We define that right from the start as m cos t plus i sine t, right? So it's like some complex number somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that for um, this part here. So I have that i hanging out the front there. So you can see where I got that from. That comes from here. And now uh, this part is going to come in here. So uh, what did we say? It was m outside of cos t plus i sine t. All right. Now uh, you can see on the left hand side, I need to do a little bit more work to get the real and imaginary parts properly separate because this i is going to interact with all that stuff on the inside. So what am I going to get? Well, I notice um, we've got, uh, let's see here. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do it like so. Um, the real parts are going to come from here and here, right? So you've got, I might as well keep, keep with purple. So I've got the i squared, so that's negative one. And then I've got m sine t. Okay, so you can see where I got that from. i times i gives the, the negative m and that's there. And then the sine t hanging out on the end. And then uh, I've got plus, you can see for the imaginary part, there's going to be an i and an m and then the cos t. i m cos t equals. And then everything on the right hand side, that has not changed. Oops, Daisy, that was not what I meant to do. Let's duplicate that. Okay, so if you're following so far, well done. Pause and go back if you need to uh, check where you're going because I know I am having trouble keeping so much of this stuff in my brain. My working memory is absolutely being maxed out. Now what I've done is I've gotten the left hand side and the right hand side with the real and imaginary parts separated out. So that's very nice and neat. And what I'm going to do therefore is compare the real and imaginary parts and see what I can gain from that. Now one of the things that uh, you can actually prove for yourself later on is that get, if you have a look at the real or the imaginary parts, they actually end up giving you the same amount of information. 
So I'm just gonna do one of them and I will leave it as an exercise to the reader um, to go and do the other one and content yourself that you actually end up with the same results that don't contradict. Um, but for now, let's just have a look at the real parts. Okay, so equating the real parts. So on the left hand side, I've got minus m sine t. I'm actually going to move that over to the right a little bit because I'm going to need a bit more space. You'll see why in a second. And what do I get from the real part of the right hand side? Uh, it's this guy here. That's the real part. So let's duplicate that down. We don't need it to be orange anymore. Okay. Now, uh, what have I got here? Well, um, you can see that um, I've got uh, all of this mess over here and, and some neat stuff over here. Now, you see how we just took the real parts from both sides and if you wanted, and I love you to do this, the imaginary parts from um, the right hand side and the left hand side, I actually can do the same thing with the sines and the cosines. Um, you can see I've got a sine term here and a sine term here, and then I've got a cos term here, but there's nothing over here for cos, um, which is to say there are zero cos terms, right? So um, what you've got here is it's, a, it's almost like a simultaneous equations sort of situation. You've got some, some A's and some B's and some A's and some B's and you want to compare them together or um, eliminate or substitute, right? So I can do the same thing one more time, just like I equated the real parts. I'm going to equate the um, trigonometric parts, right? So uh, I've got a lot of colors happening here, but here are the cos terms on the left hand side and here are the cos terms on the right hand side. And then I've got sine terms on the left and I've got sine terms on the right. Okay, so um, what can I get from this? Well, let's do, the, uh, let's do the cos terms first. So what I'm getting is, um, you can see how many cos t's are there here, zero of them. And how many cos, terms t, cos t terms are there over here, dm on dx of them. So what I get from that is, and I might put these like so, so you can see it extra clear. Um, I've got cos t's dm on dx of them equals zero. Hmm. So you can see that's how many cos t's I have here, that's how many cos t's I have there. Um, we'll return to that idea in a second. Let's do the sine t's as well just to complete things. So I've got one over here and then I've got one over here. Um, how many sine t's do I have on the right hand side? I've got minus m dt on dx of them. And then I've got minus m on the, of them on the left hand side. Okay, so you're following so far? I know it looks weird, what can I do with these, right? Well here is where I'm now going to move into this idea of integration or anti-differentiation. So I'm not going to assume you know too much here, I just want you to think about, there is a function that you know that if you were to differentiate it, some function m, if you differentiated m you should get zero. So a gradient of zero is, um, that's a horizontal line, that's a flat line, right? So therefore, the function m that has a derivative of zero is just some constant. It could be m equals um, five, that would be a horizontal line, its gradient would be zero. It could be m equals negative one, or m equals pi, anything like that, right? What I'm saying is, it is a constant of some kind. I don't know what constant, so what I'm gonna say is, um, m equals, I'm going to call it c1, um, where c1 is some, it's some constant real number. Okay, so I might just write that. c1 is a real number. Okay, so um, I've worked out that m, and just going all the way back up the top, right, m was this unknown function here, right, and I, I was going to wonder, like, how would it change um, as x changes, and what I've just determined is that apparently m doesn't change. It's some number um, that has a constant value, and I just have to find out what that constant value is, so we'll do that in a second. Now I'm going to turn my eye to t, right, I'm trying to find out what this function is. So, um, what do I get from this? Well, um, you can see here, um, I've got a, a, a minus m and a minus m over here, which I can just divide through. So that leaves me with dt on dx equals one. Hmm, so again, I'm thinking of a function that when you differentiate it, here you got zero. What function do you differentiate? When you differentiate it, you get one. So I'm trying to anti-differentiate here, um, or, or integrate in this context. Uh, I want you to think about this, right? So this is not going to be a horizontal line, but it will still be a line, right? It'll be a line with a gradient of one. Um, in other words, it's going to be x. But um, the line x is not the only line which has a gradient of one. There's a, an infinite number of them. Just like over here, um, you could have a constant, a different constant here would still differentiate to zero. 
I could have x plus some other constant like x plus 5 or x plus 100 or x minus a million. All of them would differentiate and give you 1. So what we're going to add on the end here, and this is why you can see I had a c1 there, sneaky, I didn't explain it. Um, there's going to be another constant hanging around here, right? And it's going to be some other real number. Um, and we call this the constant of integration because it comes from this process called integration. So even though I've made some progress, I've worked out that m is a constant function, I don't know what constant function, I've worked out that t is x plus something, but I don't know what that something is either. So I have to find out what these two values are. And we're getting really close to the end right here, right? 